just center my face. So Go. amazing. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to Pure Dog Talk, live at five. I am your host, Laura Reeves. And as usual, I have a really hard time telling my left from my right. And so centering my face in my little box in the middle is getting to be a struggle for me. So <laughs> welcome y'all. Uh, we have a we have a spicy night tonight. We got a spicy month coming up. I decided this was gonna be pumpkin spice month only, but spicier. No pumpkin spice. We're gonna go with hot, hot tamale spice. As you guys are all hopping on, I've got some uh, little bits of things for uh, good of the order, as they say. We are really excited about a couple of the things coming up. First and foremost, um, if you are anywhere in or around Columbus, Ohio, and can get to the AKC Breeder Symposium, or you want to try and catch it online or anything like that, you should definitely sign up for that. I am one of the speakers, along with Dr. Marty Greer, and a bunch of really smart people with some really cool topics. So you should absolutely check it out. The date of that event is not this weekend, but next weekend. And if you hold really tight, I can actually give you a number of the day. Um, oh, yeah, look at that. I am speaking on Friday the 13th, if that tells you anything about my life right now. <laughs> So I'm just saying, just <laughs> shout out to the world. I am literally speaking on Friday the 13th in October. <laughs> the good news is I'm being followed immediately by Dr. Marty Greer. So I feel like that, um, you know, probably counts as a win somewhere along the way. Um, okay. So to follow up with that, we also have a whole bunch of exciting conversation to have tonight. As I mentioned, we're in spicy, pumpkin spicy October. Um, so we've got some hot conversations that are going to be dropping on the podcast. Um, so I need you guys to bolo, be on the lookout for those. Tonight's conversation, we're talking about the four to six puppy class. This has been a big hot topic on social media. So I said, let's have some actual conversation with some actual people and get some actual thoughts without quite so much hysteria. So let's do that. Um, that's tonight. Don't forget we have our albums available where I've done all the hunting and pecking and sourcing for you. They're on the shopping tab at puredogtalk.com. If you have not signed up to become a patron, you should definitely think about it. We have an amazing group. It costs, Natalie's going to yell at me, 10 bucks a month. You know, I mean, really? Uh, you get a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, you get a lot of information, you get a lot of knowledge for not very much money. So that's a thing to think about. As dog people, we can always spend money on our dog's leashes, but not our own knowledge. So let's think about spending a little something on ourselves. A little something, something. okay? Finally, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of sick dogs at the Golden Retriever National that was in Albany, Oregon. Um, I'm here actually speaking to you from the Labrador National in and um, I have been super careful because there is a pretty amped up bad bug going around. I talked to um, one of our Pure Dog Talk people who was there. It was um, His dogs were amongst the ones who were really seriously affected. Um, there are now up to, from my understanding, close to 100 dogs affected from the Golden Retriever National. Um, I he, This patron of ours sent me links to entries all around the country and golden retrievers are absent and should be so good job golden retriever people for doing what you can at this point in, in time to quarantine your dogs and try and keep this from spreading um, i know i missed the spinoni national of the year that big um canine flu hit and we just didn't go because it was really big in wisconsin right then and we said no nah, i don't think we really need to go that bad so you know that's the thing to think about. If you've got sick dogs, please, please, God, please stay home. Um, if a dog pops up sick on your truck, it's happened. It's happened to me. Okay, it's happened to everybody. If a dog pops up sick on your truck, dude, go home. There's another dog show on another day. Um, love you, man, but go home. Um, so there's a lot of people's dogs whose, whose lives are quite literally at risk currently. And I think it's really important that the people who have 
who have taken responsibility to stay home, good job. And the people that, you know, I'm sure got caught unawares. Um, think about it, guys. So we do this because we love our dogs. And that means that we put our dogs as the priority. So I feel pretty strongly about that here in Spicy October. <laughs> so with that, with that, everybody, we have all the peeps. We are going to have all the conversations to my left, at least here in Facebook land. I have my, my de delightful friend, Natalie Thurman. She is doubling tonight as the social media coordinator running the show and offering up the owner handle position. So y'all be kind to her. To my right, please. we have my dear Karen. Yeah, please, everybody be nice to Natalie. Uh, we have my dear friend, Karen Cadry, who, you know, a few years back uh, made a wild drive with me over the course of a, a couple days in this time of year. So shout out to great dogs, great friends, old friends, make the best friends, you know, like that. So. What does that say? Sense me so, while I succeed. Excuse me while I succeed. Sorry, I couldn't read that fast. Maddie like waved it. <laughs> All right, you guys, here we go. <clears throat> In complete debate fashion, I was once a competitive Lincoln Douglas debater, so I can do this. Resolved, owner, uh, uh, professional handlers should be allowed to compete in the four to six best puppy competition. This has been, as I said, a huge hot topic on Facebook and Karen is going to represent the professional handler position who is also a breeder. Many PS professional handlers are also breeders. I speak as one. And Natalie, who is an owner handler who is just getting started, who's got her own first few litters on the ground just now. So we have a variety of opinions and of course i'm here to prevent the no tears at dog shows so oh, with that let's get to it y'all out there in the audience drop your comments drop your thoughts natalie will do double duty and drop them in here with us so i'm looking forward to it it'll be great and since we are resolved that professional handlers should be allowed to compete in um the four to six month class P.S. I did want to insert this one caveat that I forgot to mention earlier. AKC isn't actually considering this. So y'all that are getting your hopes all jacked up, it isn't going to happen. But I'm saying let's hear the conversation about why or why not this should be a topic. So Karen, hit it. Tell me you have two minutes You're on the clock. Okay. So as a longtime serious breeder, as a professional handler and as a former owner handler, I believe everyone should have the opportunity, including breeder, owner, handlers, to show in BPUT. Why? Because the fact of reality of our life today is there are fewer and fewer handling classes people can get to. As handlers, often we're the ones teaching the handling class and we don't get to work our dogs in the environment. Uh, the handling class that is less than an hour and a half from me is the one I teach. Um, I don't care if I can't compete for a ribbon. We do not have very many fun matches anymore. Often when there are B fun matches, surprisingly and sadly, those also exclude those of us who are handlers. Or we're I judging them. Or we're judging them or we're assisting clients, etc. Um, as a handler, it is important to me that my puppies that I own, that I bred, that I decided to keep, get the best experience they can in the start of life in the ring. I shouldn't have to hand them off to a total stranger. When you read through the B pup rules, nowhere does it state that this is for beginning novice amateur handlers only. It actually states it's for beginning novice puppies to get them that fun puppy experience. So because of how AKC set it up and the fact that even in their own information, it doesn't say, state that this is aimed only at new people coming into the sport, which I fully support. support um, I believe that handlers should be allowed 
allowed to bring their puppies in. If we want to have a non-compete clause where we can't go on for group placement, I don't care. I just want the puppy to be exhibition only. Let them be exhibited. Let them go to that group level as exhibition only. We don't get a placement, but we get the experience. We pay the same fee as everybody else. They have to be dogs that we bred and that we own, in my opinion. That helps cut down the problem of, well, then people will just sign them on as co-owners. That's an argument that I have heard on many times. I used to hear the same argument way back when I was still an owner handled. So, you know, that can be argued as well. Um, so, yeah, let us let us get our puppies out. As it stands right now, I won't show a puppy. I no longer show puppies very often. I usually wait till they're two to four years of age now, fully mature. And I've drug them all over the country a bunch so that I make sure they're mentally, mentally ready. Because as puppies, without that early introduction, it's not fair to them, whether they're owner handled or professional handled. Okay, good. That was Karen's two minutes. Natalie, are you ready? Your two minutes. We'll say, we'll say yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, you have you have up to two minutes. How's that? Up to two minutes. Okay, no pressure. Okay. Um. So I am a baby dog show person. I have I have shown three dogs. So super good. Um, you are my you are my audience. You are you are my avatar. Go girl. I've done it poorly. Uh, it's embarrassing some days. Um. So. For people like myself who get a new puppy, I think they started B Pup to try to get new people who just bought a puppy to show up to a show to learn some things and also not feel like they're going to be the dumbest person in the ring, um, which once the handlers come in is is a real possibility. <laughs> um, after so I just went to my national and I was like, oh, I'm the problem. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, I think I think that was kind of like their idea, whether it's executed well, I'm not sure. But I think they were trying to protect, you know, the people like me who don't know what the heck we're doing with dogs who also don't know what the heck they're doing um, and maybe make it sort of like a, a fun uh, Facebook video thing that we can all laugh at later in the SHIT handlers group. Um, but... <laughs> I have, I have heard a lot of people who cared very deeply about protecting bee pup. Um, some of the things that I've heard, cause I don't really care cause I don't have a puppy to show. Um, but I, I am here and we're doing this uh, someday. <laughs> very passionately. Um, some things I've heard is that they, they don't want it to become a title that is sought after or paid for by any sort of client, which like you're saying, if you own it and you made it, so, it so, doesn't do that. Um, if I could have you, Natalie, speak to the puppy of achievement and some of the things that people have spoken to you about that, because I feel like that's a thing that, that many of the owner handlers that I've heard from the puppy of achievement is, it means something to them. Like it sincerely is super important to them. And, and so speak to what you've heard about on that and whose dogs are having conversations. I can't tell. Mine. You. Sorry. That <laughs> sounded like Anatolians. <laughs> oh. Um, okay. Yeah, I think the puppy of achievement, I think when I see a PO, I think Ponies of America, which is different. Um, but it means puppy of achievement and dogs, which and, I and think. Some people think it's, a, I mean, there are people who feel really, really strongly about it. Like, I do not want to disrespect those people simply because I don't. Oh, I don't want to either. I think what it shows if you if you have a POA on, on your dog is that you did put in the effort and the money and the travel to get them out there before most people do, which is cool. And um, for puppies and socialization. All right, yeah, so let's this hold COVID that there. Yeah, let's hold that there. That's your two minutes. Karen, what is your thought on POA with the understanding that we're... Yep. Fact. Okay. POA is not limited to owner handlers. I own a POA because POA includes all the classes up to 12 months of age, guys. So POA is not really an argument point for the B-Pop program. 
Okay. TOA okay. includes that six to 12 months of which I can partake of. Uh, mm -hmm. Another fact, I can own a puppy that goes in be puppy. Mm -hmm. I just can't be the one at the end of the leash. Right. So you're not a, you're, so right. Um, all the AKC states, and we went through this issue. I used to have a miscellaneous breed, the Belgian Lycamois, which is now an official breed. When they started, when they added the open show, which is confusing because all of those are open, but yeah. Initially, they said professional handlers couldn't show at all. And we went, excuse us, but some of us have seriously tried to get the breed. I've been involved with getting the Lakin in introduct uh uh recognized for many many years uh so we threw a hissy fit so akc changed the rule and said oh you're right as I long as you own it you can show it yeah if the, if as long you as own you own it you can show it in open um so there is a precedent for that um puppy of achievement has nothing to do with be pup entirely so that there's not a change there also, I would also like to back up for one quick second with the idea of this. I'm hearing, well, well, this is for novice people. Again, there's nothing in the AKC program that states this. And what about all the super, super amazing, long time, beyond competitive breeder handlers, owner handlers who have competed to the best in show level for decades and achieved more wins than I've achieved as any kind of a handler, they compete in BPUP, and I, I are you going to throw them out too? Okay, so now <laughs> Natalie's like, wait, no, no, I quit, no, no, please don't. I, there, are, I really, it's very important to me, and and I am very sincere about this that both of these sides be heard. Um, sorry, once again, I can't get my lefts and my rights. <laughs> Hate this camera, um, and and Natalie, speak to what I know. You said you had conversations with people about this, and amongst the things that were mentioned, we had conversation about this in the patrons group, and and some of those. And Natalie, if you see anybody listening in that has thoughts, please drop them in here. Uh, if you guys have thoughts, we're absolutely hundred percent taking taking input. Um. But amongst the things I heard is that in this, you know, hot fire burning moment that was social social media, people sent things to AKC. And what they got back from AKC is that, you know, while it may only say it's for puppies, it's really for the people too, is kind of what the American Kennel Club response was. And that this is whether it was originally intended this way or not, but I think it is developed into this, um, the concept that the American Kennel Club wants to support the novice owner handlers. And, and that the simple presence of someone more capable than they are, whether they be a professional or a breeder or what have you, is unnerving. And, and I, I don't know that that's a great solution, right? I think we all learn by being challenged, but I know it is something that is a thing. And amongst the things that were observed in our patrons conversation, and Karen, you brought up the POA thing and that you are as a professional handler eligible to compete in the six to nine months and the nine to 12 month classes. The actual point of the person who was talking about this is that they, um, feel as if they are not competitive in those classes because professional handlers are there and that their only chance to get those points is from four to six months. So for people who feel very strongly that the POA, the, the not puppy of America, puppy of achievement is, sorry, I'm trying really hard you guys. The puppy of achievement is is something that they want to have as a goal and i think it's a worthwhile goal like i you know i think akc gets banged a lot for not being encouraging and inviting and we as the representatives of the akc get banged for the same thing so let's not be snitty and snotty and laugh at people who think that's a big deal all right that's not cool i really sincerely believe that for people who think it is a big deal 
they should get to do that. They should get to have that moment. And I judge. So now I'm going to give my two minutes now as like the, the member in the middle here or whatever this is. Um, that I judge a lot of these. Moderator. I really, really. Oh, that's what it is. Moderator in the middle. <laughs> I really enjoy judging four to six competitions. I tell all the clubs that hire me, I said, give me all the kids and the puppies because I'm all about it. And I am. I sincerely love it. And in the, the, the competitions that I judge and understand now that I've judged them, you know, coast to coast, um, the vast majority of the entries that I have judged have been regular brand new people running with their leash in two hands, right? Like people who, who truly are not experienced in the ring. And there have been a few over the course of time who were like Karen was talking about more experienced breeders, that sort of thing. And so, you know, I, I really see both sides of this clearly as someone who, when this first started, had a puppy who was owned by my assistant, my like, you know, 14 year old, 13 year old assistant. And, um, and they tried to tell him he couldn't show it in best puppy. I, you know, let's, let's think about how far we're going to take that and run with it. You know, it's a kid. I mean, is he a relatively talented kid? Sure. That's not the point. Truly not the point, in my opinion. But that's my opinion. So, my time is up. Back to Natalie. We have a comment. Excellent. I love comments. <laughs> Yay! This just in. It's now interesting. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God we're not in Congress. Oh, hey, hey Robin. Uh, I don't... <laughs> I don't know why it cannot be like many... Um, national sweeps. If you own it, you can show it regardless if you're a handler or not. No points for champion are involved. So I have had to hand several of my puppies off, which they went with, but didn't show as well. Right. Exactly. I mean, that's kind of my point. Um, you know, and Karen, I think maybe you made the point earlier and it's one that I actually strongly agree with on the handlers should be allowed side. I want my puppy's first experience in a quote unquote show ring to be with wait for it, me. <laughs> um, I don't want it to be with some random stranger that's going to make it freak out. So, you know, um, Natalie, speak to some of the comments that we saw in the patrons group that I thought there were some ones in there that were super valid. Talking more about <laughs> from... Did you say super bad? <laughs> No, no. Oh, valid, valid, super valid. Oh my I god! I have kids and puppies and human children. Who are making I'm lots of noise. Mo or curly. I was like, oh, we're going for those ones. No, no. <laughs> super valid, valid. Like, Extra syllables just snuck in. Valid. So, so you are guys out there in Facebook listener land. This is not a rerun of, of the three stooges. We really are totally what? on first base or who's on, who's on first. No. We're here to help. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. Speak to the valid comp valid on point conversations that you saw um, in the patrons group. Cause there were several, there were several. And I think speaking to the comfort level of the exhibitor is one of them. So yeah. Speak to that. Yeah. So I, I do think that there are people who start out and it is intimidating to go up against the lures and the Karens of the world be because you just make it look so easy. And then we try to go do it. And then it's not as easy, not even a little bit. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> which I mean, I know is why we have owner handled groups, but like, you know, if you're not getting to the owner handled group either, BPUP could be a good place to feel safe as a non-experienced dog show human. Um, and I, I think that some people were just like, hey, like you are, the handlers kind of run it. 
and we understand and hopefully respect that if there were no professional handlers paying all the entry fees for their whole truck, there would be no dog show. <laughs> like, <laughs> like without you guys, it wouldn't exist. <laughs> so if we want it, no, it is a balance. It is a really interesting balance, Natalie. And I, I think this is an interesting point that you make. And Karen, you can probably speak to this too. Cause I know you did a lot owner handle for a lot of years. Um, depending on the show, if you talk to the, you know, the show chairs at the show, depending on the show, the, number of entries is either basically split or to be honest with you, slightly heavier to the owner handled side. Up um, to 80% about- of entries are actually owner handled entries up to 80%. I understand, but I think that's a, I think that's a, an unrealistic number for most shows. I think most shows. Well, when I have to show. Yeah. Right. It's it's per show. And when I talk to show chairs, it's either about 50 50 or maybe 55 45 under handled to professional handled. Um, the, the thing that happens though is that professional handlers have lower number of humans to dogs, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Like two humans equals 20 dogs, where with an owner yeah. handler, one human equals one dog. And yeah. Or like to, right. You understand yeah. what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. So those are, those are numbers that are real. So, yeah. okay. Listener land, anybody else with thoughts and ideas, input, something that we missed, jump in. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to take the Natalie side of things, right? The no professional handlers shouldn't. Um, and I'm going to. I like Robin's comment that Robin, that just came up. Uh-huh. Robin's that I've agreed with that from the beginning because as soon as they put a points and a rankings on the B pup, they took away any meaning of it being just for starting of anything. To be honest, I agree well, with you, Robin. And, yeah, no, Robin, you're not wrong, and and I think that you know, I, again, I understand the concept behind the the puppy of achievement. Um, And I understand the idea of what I think, what many of us in the sport call a gateway drug. So for brand new people, right, BPUP is a gateway drug. It's like the the smoke and doobie of the dog world. And girl, am I showing my age? Is that what that was? Yeah. (laughs) Bumper sticker and t-shirt coming soon. But it is. I mean, it's seriously, it's, it's the easy, it's the easy introduction to what many people will tell you. I've just been reading several of, of the, you know, insights on this, something of a gambling addiction, purebred dogs, right? Like every single time we breed a litter, it's the same high that you get when you push the button on the slot machine, you know, is it going to be bingo? Or is it going to be like, what's that like sound, right? Um, And every single time we do a breeding, we're pretty sure it's going to be bingo and 50-50, right? If you're lucky, it's 50-50. It's bingo-ish versus swirling-ish. And and that's what breeding is. But it is that hope. And, And I was just reading... Um, so I've had several, it's national season, right? So everybody's writing about their nationals and writing about all this stuff. And hope is what gets us, keeps us, gets us and keeps us. And I guess that's what I would pen best puppy to the four to six thing is that baby inkling of hope, that tiny tingle of hope that the very first new person gets uh, when they get their first puppy and they are so excited and they don't know what the hell they're doing. And their breeders probably shoving them in the ring with a foot in their ass. Right. And, and they're really encouraging them to do this. Um, it's hope. And I guess to me, when I judge it, when I see it, best puppy to me represents hope. It represents the hope that we as breeders have for those puppies that are in the ring. (coughs) It represents the hope that those owners and hand, handlers have for their new puppies. Sorry. <coughs> uh, 
dry throat. Um, there's no crying in dog shows, just so you know. <clears throat> it's hope. And so the part of me that is not the big bad wolf likes to think that I it's a tiny, tiny, tiny part. <laughs> I'm like the Grinch, you know, with the tiny, tiny heart. Um, the part of me that, that thinks that hope is important thinks that owner handled being what is important and, and encouraging new people being what's important. I, you know, I see the argument to, to make it a safe, quote unquote, safe space from professionals. All right. So Karen, I would love, I see you raising your hand and what I'm hoping you're going to run with is that from the perspective of allowing professional handlers, the benefit of allowing professional handlers into this, particularly in an exhibition only concept is how much help the handlers can be to the people that are in the ring. That's what I would have you speak to. Definitely. Um, anyone that knows me knows that I actually even have a whole coaching program aimed at owner handlers. I am the biggest owner handler supporter that anyone could imagine. I mean, there's, there's tons of handlers who support owner handlers. With that said, make it exhibition only. We don't get an award. We don't get POA points. I honestly don't give two figs about whether or not I get the ribbon, or whether or not I get the POA points. I care that my promising four to six month old puppy gets a chance to experience the ring, including being in the ring with somebody who doesn't really know what they're doing. While I'm in there, I can be like, okay, hon, let's put your leash in one hand. Let's do this. I'm good at multitasking. Pretty much 99.999% of all handlers are good at multitasking because we have to be. I run a really tight ship. I don't carry a, a assistance in general. Um, so I've always got multiple dogs up to eight on my own string of my own. Um, but I always make sure that I'm there to help somebody who needs a helping hand because without the owner handlers, we don't have a sport period. Well, we will not have a right. sport. No, we don't. <laughs> that's, that's a fact. And without the breeders, you know, so and, that, and as a longtime serious breeder, I just, I'm just asking that I not be penalized because I've gained some of my income. And here's the other thing for the argument that I saw on pure dog talk. Well, well, handlers, it's their job. Well, yes, but less than 5% of all handlers do it as a full, full time exclusive. That's the only way they make their income. Most of us have either do have or have had real job 40 not real because what handling is a job but we have monday through friday or monday through thursday we have 40 hour a week jobs that we cram in and we run around the country showing dogs so in in reality our own dogs often suffer because we have to give it all to our client dogs that's the My true reality. Always the, the, the of reality course. of the of the shoemaker's children being barefoot and is, the magnetic scar and yeah exactly so all i'm I saying is give know, us that chance no i think you're right but i do think i'd have you speak to the concept or maybe natalie can touch on this or maybe i'll run with it the idea that and this was another one that i saw introduced in one of our conversations maybe in the patrons mm -hmm. group um i'm as a handler I'm just going to speak for myself and say I more than once went in the show ring with a six month old puppy that had never been on a flipping leash and it still won. Yep. So I, not only am I a better, a better adapted, better equipped, what have you to train my dog, socialize my dog, get it to places because I'm just always on the go. Um, I, I also am a good enough handler that I can take a dog that doesn't know how to walk on a leash and, and train it in the ring and still win. So, I mean, that is a thing. Yeah, it is a thing. And I, that's why I say make it so that we're exhibition only. We cannot get a placement. We cannot get an award. We don't get anything towards POA or whatever. 
but we get the chance to get that puppy in the ring to be with other dogs first of its own kind and then let right. us go into the group as an exhibition only just to get them in there with other breeds that mm -hmm. is the key that is the key actually karen and and natalie you've been in owner handle groups and i'd like for you to share your first experience in an owner handle group with an anatolian oh. <laughs> that face. please stop making that face but do share this and, and Set up. I do share this Whole because thing. it was really, it was really, you no, know, it really was an important conversation to be had for people who don't necessarily know or understand and why it's so important to get dogs experienced in a ring that has dogs other than what they're used to. What's not like me. I only well, have all the Antolians and I have a rental pug from Laura, but um, they don't cross paths. Uh, no, please. Yeah. Like my, honestly, my mama dogs think that she's just the weirdest looking puppy and they're like, come nurse, I guess. And, and she just like zooms around them and then goes back in the house and it's just, it's chaos. She's great. Um, uh, but it's a kiss. So yeah, it's kiss. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Aries going in the, the first time in, in group, it was his first dog show also. And he is three. So uh, that's a great thing to do for a temperament test is you take your Anatolian off the farm and you give it a bath, two baths actually. And then you throw it in a ring on a tight chain with a bunch of, Next to a whole like, bunch of other dogs. Yeah. And, and then you have a, a Husky. I think it was a lady with a Husky, uh, just run up your ass the whole time while we're, we're relaxing to just make him wild. Uh, <laughs> just, I'm so sorry. It's a great way to break yourself and your dog into a dog show. <laughs> I think Natalie's, Natalie's lived experience to me is why it's so important for people who don't have the experience or the knowledge or the confidence to take their whatever into a ring full of other dogs wouldn't it have been great if you had taken aries to a best puppy match for example when he, when he, when he was less than 50 pounds <laughs> less than 50 pounds less than how many pounds is it he is now it's not 50 140 i was gonna yeah. say about 130 to 150 yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and he did fine honestly but he was day three he was uh he was done, done. he's like this is ridiculous. And I'm like, I don't disagree. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I too have a breed that is not the easiest breed to integrate into strangers. And mm -hmm. by nature, Belgians, Belgian Tiburon and Belgian Lycanois uh, are my primary German white hair pointers, which I grew up with. Those are all breeds that can look at other dogs and other situations as like, hmm, this is suspect. Um, so Can I tell them you having the first, time, the first time my pug special saw Pekingese in the group ring. Oh, Lewis thought it was a moving slipper. Lewis. <laughs> yeah, that does not surprise me. So I'm saying there's a real argument to be made for even buggies. Um, yeah. that, that needs to that need to experience the joys of other dogs. And handler breeds. puppies will experience other breeds theoretically in their daily lives that our dogs do, maybe don't. Maybe do, yes. maybe Super don't. Point. Super good okay. point. I will I will also counterpoint because it is my dog, guess what sits home so that client dogs can be on the truck. True. We have a long comment. Laura, would you like to do a dramatic awesome. Shatner-esque reading? What? Yes, please. Shatner-esque. Give me it. It's very long. No, oh, you do it. Alicia. Hi, Alicia. It's one of my people. It's okay. It's cool. Um, okay, oh, Alicia. Alicia. I know. Um, I'm involved in a lot of performance events with my dogs. B-Pup gives me an opportunity to feel like I'm able to try out a new sport that I am not familiar with and have other people who are at my same skill level to compete against. With BPUP limiting the entries to people who are not professional handlers, 
I don't have to worry about someone saying, oh, the only reason why you didn't win is because so-and-so, the professional handler always wins at this show. If there was not a bee pup, I most likely would not be as interested in starting a new dog or moving away from performance events. So, Alicia, please take my puppy to a best puppy. Please. <laughs> Alicia, again, if we limit to handlers to not being able to compete, we... I would say 99% of the, of the breeder handlers that I know, which is a lot of people, and when I've had this conversation with them, would say, fine, we don't have to be competing. You can be in there to win. We don't care about the win. We care about the experience for our puppy. They deserve the opportunity to have that same experience that you cannot replicate in any other fashion than at the dog show. Okay, so here's my spin. And, and this was my pitch when somebody started talking to me about this um, early on <clears throat> to, to do this as our topic for tonight. So here's my spin. Back in the day, Karen, you are old enough to remember this. I think I remember mm -hmm. you being there, actually. I'm Natalie, you aren't. You. A, lot of our, a lot of our listeners um, maybe are not, but hear me out. Back in the day, many years, many, 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 many years ago, at the Brush Prairie Dog Show every summer in Brush Prairie, Washington, a bunch of us handler, handler light, you know, whatever type people. I mean, this was very early in my, in my handling career, like very, very, this is when Katie Campbell and I were still traveling together. We were all baby dog people together. So back in that day, um, we would all get together with our assistants so that they wouldn't be tipping over the porta potties. <clears throat> and we would host our own fun match at the dog show. And it was all the people didn't matter back in those days, owner handler and professional handler weren't really actually a thing. That was a, even a thing. Um, we were all just dog people together and a whole bunch of us would get together and we'd like put chairs at four corners of a space on this nasty ass grass that was burned to hell in July. And there might've been alcoholic beverages involved. I'm not going to, you know, lie about that. It was possible. And we would have fun and we would bring our puppies. We would bring our young dogs. We would bring our assistants. We would trade breeds. If, if you could have seen, you know, Carl Lindemeyer try to show a Basenji or um, Katie Campbell show her first toy poodle. I mean, you know, I, there was number one camaraderie. There was number two the opportunity to expose our dogs to a, a fabulous um, dog show esque ish environment. Um, there was learning involved for the assistant and we had a class for, you know, assistants, parents, and it was, I mean, it was super fun. Um, so when we bitch and moan about, Oh, you know, clubs, AKC, blah, blah, blah. blah Okay, guys, no club, no AKC, no nobody. That was just a bunch of us got together and did it. So I, towards the end of our evening here tonight, I'm going to throw down that gauntlet. Everybody's real busy. Everybody's real cool. Um, and I think a lot of what has lost, been lost. Wait, are you laughing at me? Bitch, are you laughing at me? I'm <laughs> laughing at the idea that I'm real cool. <laughs> um, I guess my point is that the more things change, the less um, I think that they improve in some respects. Some things are better, some things are not. And we can take it upon ourselves to change that. We don't have to give that power away to somebody else. We can take the power to make things fun for ourselves and for our people. And if you are a professional handler who has a bunch of puppies that you want to get in the best puppy, AKC isn't going to change this rule. So no. it's now going to be up to you. 
So figure it out. Make a ring. Everybody bring their puppies. The rule for the American Kennel Club is that you cannot have your under six month old unentered puppies on the show grounds. Yep. Okay, there's a big difference between the show grounds and where many people are parked in their RVs, like at Brush Prairie, where you were parked a mile away under the one oak tree. Um, and that's where we usually had those fun matches. Um, so I feel like my answer to a lot of the whiny pissy pee pants is um, make your own fun match. Um, you know, give up that $100 client paid for dinner and take your puppies out and run around in the grass. You're doing it wrong. Yeah, you're definitely doing it wrong. <laughs> um, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to throw that out. I'm going to, I'm going to throw down on that. Invite and I'm going to, we don't know what they're doing to your fun match, please. A hundred percent invite the people that don't know what Always. they're doing. Um, that is, I, I know that people who are listening tonight have seen my 12 steps to a better you in the dog show. This is one of them. I'm pretty sure this is like June. Have a potluck, make a fun match get together, plan it out. Hey, you guys, I've got a bunch of puppies. Can we do some litter evals? Can we, you know, try not to do it when there's um, dog flu going around the Golden Retriever National would be my recommendation. Um, but, you know, I, I know damn good and well that people have puppies that aren't entered sitting in their rigs. I did. Don't take them on the showgrounds. Okay, fine. I know clubs that still won't offer best puppy because they're worried about the liability of the puppies getting sick. So, I mean, that's a whole nother topic altogether. The club that I was most involved with and the club I'm still involved with won't offer it. So, um, you know, that's another thing. Figure out how to make your own fun match and, and kind of do a little bit of a throwback to back in the day when we all kind of hung out together and played with our puppies and, you know, had fun. I still Spicy. have fun. I understand. But you understand my point too, Karen. No, no, I'm saying, yeah. And and I I would just add, I think some of what is frustrating for handlers and owner handlers, because I've I've worn both hats through the nineties, through the eighty late eighties, nineties, two thousands, and now the, the mid two thousands where I've been a handler and an, and or an owner handler at different periods, depending on what was in my life, is the they versus we. And I will attest that it has gotten far, far more so than it ever used to be. I believe so strongly in the owner handlers that I have a whole program for it. Um, because I do believe that they are the true backbone of our sport without so owner handlers. We're wondering. Yeah. Yeah. And without, without owner handler, I'm an owner handler. I'm a handler, but I'm an owner handler too. Right. I am a breeder owner handler, which I take a lot of pride in because I've worked my hind end off to be in this position and to have top winning dogs that I bred. It's taken a lot of years. Um, and we all start somewhere and we have, we, those of us who are experienced, whether we're an experienced breeder, breeder owner, handler, breeder, professional handler, it doesn't matter. We need to support the people wanting to come up because we need each other. Um, we won't have a sport if we keep chasing people away because we're mean to them. It, it, exactly. And that, that is why I feel strongly about, let us play, but, but don't give us a ribbon. That's fine. Exhibition only leave all of the competition to the people that truly get a thrill from that competition. Okay. Just let so us that's, Karen's, get that's Karen's closing argument. Natalie, what's your closing argument? Argument to begin with. That was like a plug face. Don't do that. You didn't Be like an that? Anatoly. The Anatoly. That's Anatolian. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, 
I think that the AKC is not going to change it even if we wanted them to. And uh, I think a lot of people are very territorial about it and feel very strongly that it's their one shining chance to do something without the shadow of a handler in front of them, which, okay. (laughs) Okay. You know what? That's okay. And, and, and I honestly, truthfully, sincerely kind of agree with Natalie. Um, I absolutely recognize Karen's point. My answer to it is instead of, you know, yelling at AKC to do something they're not going to freaking do, um, fix it yourself, make your own program, make your own fun match. So there you go. You guys, three sides to a hot topic with a little bit of passion and a little bit of three stooges. And, um, just, uh, want you all to kind of keep on the bolo. Uh, we've got some really interesting conversations coming up um, on the podcast in the next couple of weeks. Um, I had a couple of people reach out to me about different situations. And I said, you know, this is an interesting conversation. So amongst our upcoming topics are a discussion about American bullies and how the people in that breed want more input from established preservation breeders to help them develop that breed properly. Um, and then as the flip side to that, uh, discussion with some folk, uh, with a gal with the uh, silken wind hounds talking about that breed and why that breed has received a lot of support from within the more established purebred dog community. So I just thought it was really interesting. Um, so many of our breeds were not, you know, evolved from the head of Zeus. Um, every purebred dog at some point or another um was not was developed from from people in a certain place as we say all the time certain people certain place certain time to do a cer- certain job and the jobs that the people of the 21st century need are not necessarily the the jobs that the dogs that were developed 200 years ago are were doing and so people are still actively developing breeds that meet specific needs for the 21st century. Now, am I going to do that? Probably not. I like my 200 year old doodle, (laughs) Uh, which is, which is kind of where her pointers are. Um, (laughs) I told you it's spicy, spicy October, man. (laughs) You mainline the pumpkin spice over there, Laura. Like, (laughs) jeez. My 200-year-old doodle. I'm also going to make that a t-shirt with a Pure Dog Talk logo. <laughs> with a picture of Warrior. Right, right. uh-huh. Anybody else out there in listener land got anything to add to this insightful conversation this evening? Quotable quotes. Here's Robin again. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Lure coursing. 100%. We did it. We used to make, when we would go to the um, hunt test and the field the trials, Huh? Robin's the bomb. Robin is the bomb. Um, she, she, uh, I beat the down person. She had enough good sense to love keepers. So that's all I'm saying. Hey. Um, we used to do it. We used to do little fun matches at the hunt test for God's sake. You know, I just, there's lots of, there's lots of opportunities to make your own opportunity. So my recommendation to anyone, anywhere, anytime is before you, bitch and moan and kvetch and complain, fix it yourself. Take all our fun away. I know, right? (laughs) Right? All right, y'all. Whoop, whoop. Peace out. Peace out. Five and five. We will catch you the first Tuesday of November. Um, And on a topic as yet to be determined. Or maybe we're keeping it secret so the competitors don't beat us to it. I don't know. It could be one of those. <laughs> or maybe Natalie won't schedule it in advance. We'll see. <laughs> Peace, yeah. Thanks for joining us. We look forward to this every month. All right.